Isaiah chapter 32, Jonah, the 32nd book of the Bible. Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness, and princes shall rule in judgment. 2 Samuel 23, 1 through 5. A man shall be as a hiding place from the wind, and a cover, a cover from the tempest, storms, as rivers of water in a dry place. Men need water, animals need water, plants need water. As the shadow of a great rock in a weary land, it's relief, it's protection. And the eyes of them that see shall not be dim, even upon age. You read out through the Bible from what we read, Genesis 1 to here we are, Isaiah, you know, they grew old and their eyes waxing dim and they couldn't see. And the ears of them that hear shall hearken. No loss of hearing. There's a change in, in the age, breakdown. The heart also of the rash, hasty, shall understand knowledge. Oh, he's got to slow down. He's got to calm down to get the knowledge. If being rash, being hasty, you don't learn anything but trouble. And the tongue of the stammerers, have a hard time speaking, shall be ready to speak plainly. So there's a change in, in human nature. There's a change in, in troubles and problems and diseases. The vile person shall be no more called liberal. We'll get in liberal in a minute. Nor the churl, rude or a miser. Nor the churl said to the bountiful. For the vile person shall speak villainly. That's extreme wickedness. And his heart will work iniquity. This is the vile person. To practice hypocrisy. And to utter error against the Lord. So if you deal with anybody who is in extreme wickedness, who is involved with iniquity, that are in hypocrisy, and they err against God, they are a vile person, according to the Bible. And I don't care who they are. They are vile. That's what God said. Today, America, they bless the wicked and, and try to curse those that, that do right. To make empty the soul of the hungry. He's hungry and he's going to try to make him even worse. He shall cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. So he's not offering help. He's not reaching out to help anybody. He's making it worse. When people in a country are so taxed and they even apply more taxes upon a tax, you're draining. You're draining the pocketbook. The instruments, also the churl, this is the guy that is, he, he's, uh, he's a miser, he's rude, are evil. Anything he uses. He devises wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words. He's a liar. He's of his father of Satan, the devil. And if you take drink from the thirsty, they can't drink. If you take food from those that are hungry, you're, you're killing them. You're a murderer, John 8, 44. Even when the needy speaketh right. You got a guy who has a great need. And he comes in and he speaks what he's supposed to say and all that. And guess what? He's not going to get what he needs. This could be likened to the Antichrist in his reign. Unless you receive the mark, you're not getting food. Unless you receive the mark, you're not getting water. Unless you receive the mark, you're not getting no help. Matter of fact, things will be worse for you. But the liberal, this is the free heart. He's a giver. I mean, not like the liberals of America, you know, they give of your money, not theirs. This is a person that gives of himself, devises liberal things. How to give, how to help. 
and by liberal things shall he stand. God loves a cheerful giver. A Christian is to be a liberal, giving freely to help other Christians. You got to be careful with your money and how liberal you are. You can be too liberal and not get blessed. You can give money who people are going to use their money for anything but righteousness. Rise up. Now we take a turn. Now we take a turn to America. Rise up. Get up. You women that are at ease. Sit down. That's what they're doing. They're not doing nothing. Hear my voice, Isaiah's voice. This is going on in Isaiah's time. It's going on today. History has not improved. History only repeats itself. There are plenty of lazy women who don't want to do nothing in America. All they do is make babies and get more money from the government. If they're under their father's house, they're to help their father. If they're under their husband, they're supposed to provide for their husband. That means cooking, cleaning, everything. I hear a song over the overhead at work. I won't pick up your clothes, but I'll be your girlfriend. No, no, no. Listen, if you reach the marriage, you pick up his clothes. You go over there and read, uh, read Proverbs chapter 31 and see what that virtuous woman is supposed to be. She's supposed to be a uh, 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 busy woman. She had no time to watch any television programs, soaps, or anything like that. And then she, when she gets to bed, 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, she's a young woman. She's got to get up for the, for the babies that are crying. Eat careless daughters. That's what the Bible calls it. Careless. You have no cares. Give ear unto my speech. Listen to what Isaiah has to say. You lazy women of America, you better listen to what Isaiah has to say. Many days and years shall ye be troubled. You got plenty of women today that are not troubled. Trouble comes. Trouble is a root of life. You live life, you got trouble. The only ones that don't have trouble are those that are dead. And those that are unsafe and die, they only begun their trouble. Ye careless woman, for the vintage, and that's the produce of the vine. That's what the vine produces. Shall fail. Well, there's coming a day when you're not going to be able to go pick your crops. The gathering shall not come. The harvesting. Tremble ye women that are at ease. Maybe one day the welfare system will fail. Maybe all the babies you got, maybe America won't be able to. Listen, America is over a trillion dollar in debt. And they keep sending out checks to people who don't deserve them. One day in God's reckoning and one, one day in God's accounting, that will end. You can't keep on writing checks that you don't have money for and expect a blessing. Unless America survives through the tribulation and then you change your money in for a mark. Now, if America falls before the tribulation, you're going to have starvation in all the streets because you won't have your welfare card. You won't have your wick and all that. The grocery stores will be filled with food and no one will have the money to buy it. Ye careless ones, strip you. Oh, American women would love to hear that one. Strip me. Make you bare. Oh. That's the beach. And gird sackcloth upon your loins. You better be in desolation. You better be in repentance. You better be. We are in big trouble when it comes to that sackcloth. They shall lament for the teats. That's the breast. Hey, we got a thing today a vast of uh, breast cancer. For the pleasant fields. For the fruitful vine, no milk, no food, no produce. 
upon the land of my people, Israel, shall come up thorns and briars. That's the curse. The land that hasn't been worked, been put aside. I would proper say I went by the field of, of the slothful and nettles were overgrown, the wall was broken down. That means they're not doing the work. If you're not doing the work, you're not going to get the produce. America's turning her farms into cement, parking lots. That ain't going to give you no food. Well, we'll rely on China, we'll rely on Japan, we'll rely... You mean countries that are enemies with us, that don't like us? You mean countries that we owe billions of dollars to? That we haven't paid our debt? Yea, upon all the houses of joy in the joyous city. Won't be no more joy. Because the palaces shall be forsaken. That's the rich places. The royal places. The multitude of the city shall be left. No one there no more. Evacuation. The forts and towers shall be for dens forever. What's the dens for? A joy of wild asses and pasture of flocks. Animals are going to take. Listen, the multitude of the city shall be left. Once all the food is gone, man, listen, people are going to get out of that city because guess what? You think there's riots over cops killing people today? You wait to see when there's no more food and no more money and no more government handouts. You wait to see what the riots will be then. They won't be taking television sets and iPods and phones and that other junk. They'll be actually stealing food and not hair places and stuff and that other junk. Listen, these riots today, they're not taking food. They're taking anything but food. But there'll be a day, if the if American economy falls, they will rob the grocery store. And you better get your life out if you're in a city, because they'll do anything to get your food. Until the Spirit be poured out upon us from on high, until the Lord steps in, and the wilderness be a fruitful field, the fruitful field be counted for a forest. Until the God steps in. Misery. Curse. Thorns. Briars. No food. Cities vacant. Animals taken over. But when God steps in, the field should be counted for a forest. A forest has a lot of trees. Now imagine a forest likened to a fruitful field of uh, this complete corn, wheat. Barley, tomatoes, onions, anything. Just a complete mass growth of them under the Lord in the millennium. Then judgment shall dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness remain in the fruitful field. Well, those that do right will be in the fields, and those that don't, there'll be judgment in the wilderness. The wilderness, there's nothing there. In the wilderness is where most of Israel died. And to, the, to that, that age of people died out and the younger entered in. The ones that violated God and angered God, they died in the wilderness. The younger ones are the ones that went into the fruitful field, the land of milk and honey. And the work of righteousness shall be peace. There we go. You ain't going to get that under man. And the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. Oh. So one day people will know that they have salvation. The Jews in the millennium will know finally because there is their Savior. And my people, Jews, not Americans, not Ishmael, not Arabians, the Jewish people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation. That's not Israel today. So we can't be reading. Listen, this, has, this wasn't even Israel in Isaiah's time. The only time that Israel really had peace was recorded under Solomon. But he put them to burdens and hewers and stone and all that. He put them to hard work that when Rehoboam comes in, Jeroboam comes in, you know, you know, please make our work lighter. He said, my father chastised you with, with, with whips. Well, there was peace from war, but it didn't look like there was a peace from labor. And then when the Lord Jesus Christ came... 
there was peace. But that was only what? Three and a half years? Maybe the full 33 and a half years he was alive? 70 AD, Titus came in and wiped them completely all out. Just like what Nebuchadnezzar did in Babylon. And they've been fighting wars ever since over there. My people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation. That's not now. That hasn't been then. I wonder how much blood has been shed in that land even before Abraham. Since Noah's boys got out of the ark and settled in that area of the Jebusites. And in sure dwellings. That means the tax collector ain't going to take your land. That means they're not going to fight over your land. The guy's going to get himself a house. He's going to get himself a field or, or uh, whatever he gets. And it's going to be sure. It's going to be his. The Bible records the law. You're not to change the, the markings of the land. That's violation. That's what Ahab wanted to do with uh, Naboth. Well, give me your land. He says, I can't give you my land because it's the law. So he's killed. That's not going to happen. And in quiet resting places, just sitting back, kicking back. You're going to have work. We read that the other night. But after the work is done, you're just going to sit back and be with the family and with an open campfire and go off right to sleep. The best sleep you ever get is the sleep that when you work hard all day. That is the best rest. That's a quite opposite from when we, these women that are at Eve. When it shall hail. Weather, hail. Coming down on the forest. And the city shall be low in low place. Don't worry about the weather. Don't worry about if you're in a valley. Don't worry about it. Just rest. Do right. There's the Lord Jesus Christ. No worry. Don't, don't care. Hurricane comes. I don't know if Florida will be here, but whatever whatever here and that hurricane comes on. Who cares? Rest in the Lord. Blessed are ye that sow beside all water. Water is for you, water is for the plants, and water is for your animals. Waters are needed. That send forth thither the feet of the ox and the ass. Now that verse there, I have it marked as a paragraph. Brand new subject. In the New Testament, the feet of the ox, Paul likens that of a preacher. In Romans 10, uh, 11 or 12, it says, Blessed are the feet. The ass is, a, is an animal of burden. He carries things. A missionary evangelist carries his all and goes place to place to, to preach the gospel. Blessed are ye that sow beside all waters. There's a place in Psalm says, oh, it says, uh, cast your bread upon many waters. Scripture with scripture. With this verse here, you are blessed when you help a preacher and you help someone laboring of the word. God will bless you. And when you are sowing too. Don't let the preacher. Oh our preacher will do the, do the door knocking. Don't let the missionary. Oh the missionary will go out and all that. Don't let the guy who's serving. For, don't let him do all the work. You grab a fistful of gospel. Try, you try to get people saved too. Blessed are ye that sow. Beside all waters. And I know there's no end there. But that send forth thither the feet of the ox in the end. You do sowing, your preacher does sowing, preachers do sowing, and the burden, the guys who, who, who burden in the, in the gospel do the work. All right, blessed are ye that sow besides all water. You, you have a crop. You make money off your crop. With that money and crop, you pay for your family, you take care of your bills, and with that money, you send for it. your preacher and the guy burdening in the labor. 
Because all people can't be preachers. All people can't be missionaries. All people can't be evangelists. And when you got a missionary or evangelist, he can't have a job. He, he's here, there, everywhere. A preacher is not supposed to have an outside job. You're supposed to be paying him so he can labor in the Word, labor with the people, and hospital visits and everything. He's not supposed to be out there earning a secular job. You're supposed to be paying him. And Paul says, you're supposed to be giving him double his hire. But things have changed. We don't. And then you turn around and think, God bless America. Why? Half of them are not working. Half the Christians ain't doing what they're supposed to be doing. And then ridicule the ones that are doing. And then churches are gathered in mega churches. They're not sending out a feed of, of preachers. They're on one preacher. Just one. Let's build the biggest church we can. That's not. What if America failed tomorrow morning? Tomorrow morning we woke up like Babylon and America failed. There is not one proper church in Daytona Beach that we can go to as a family. Not one. We have to go 22 miles for a church. How can we do that if, if I can't access my, my, my debit card to pay for gasoline anymore? If I don't have gasoline, I can't go 22 miles to church. And some of you listening to this, you know the same thing. The Bible says in the book of Acts, they went from house to house. I believe, this is what I believe. You are to have a church in every neighborhood. In your house. They went house to house. So if the economy ever did fall, you can't go 22 miles to church. You should be able, you should be able to walk to a church. And that preacher should be laboring in the word. You're supposed to be supporting that man to do his job. And missionaries and evangelists that come to your church, you're to help them to get the gospel out. But we're too busy, you know, look how many people we got saved to come to our church. You're supposed to be sending people out. Paul did not keep Timothy. Paul did not keep Silas. He trained them. And he said, Timothy, I'm going to send you. The Paul sent many preachers to, to the Corinth church. We've got to get out of this. And the church is only going to fail because it's going to fall on apostasy. That's what the Bible said. You're going to have a point there's going to be no church in America. Half, more, half the people in America don't even know who Jesus Christ is. We're paying for programs, vacation Bible junk. We're sending out our buses, our vans. But we're not sending men out. We'll bus them to our church. Why not raise capable men like the Bible said and send them to that area, that neighborhood, to begin a work? And grow. Missionaries are doing that all over the world. They'll train people up, find a capable man in that church, get them started, get that church going. Boom, the guy's capable, and the missionary we support in Poland has moved on to another thing because now there's a missionary. Now there is a pastor that's local, that is part of that church, who lives there, and they're ready to go. Let's go start another one. That's how it's supposed to be. We're not supposed to be wrap up all the ministries, get how many people we're supposed to get, and get as much as we can. And all. That's not Bible. We're supposed to be sending forth. Growing. And you can't do that with idol uh, you can't do that with idleness. We're warned of idleness of the women. And don't worry about the weather. Don't worry about the storm. It says that. A man shall be a hiding place from the wind, a cover from the tempest, as rivers of water in a dry place. That should be the man of God. That should be the man that God is sent to go do the word. There are people out there who are worried. There are people out there who, who have a life that's miserable. There are people out there who are in idleness. There are people in idolatry. There are people in sins. There are people who are relying on drugs. There are people relying on alcohol. There are people relying on, they got all kinds of troubles. And you're supposed to be sent 
to them with the word and with light. The water. That's the word. That's the word of God. The water. So the Holy Spirit is likened to the water. We're supposed to be doing and we're not. Very few are. 